Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace and this is episode one of five on flight. Subscribe so you get all five of our episodes in this series. If you haven't subscribed and you're listening right now, watching right now, please take a second hit that subscribe button. You can also come check us out on iTunes if you like. We have an audio podcast over there. Um, and we've been having some problems, but everything should be working now. If it's not, please send us a tweet at TestTube. You can also find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. But this week, we're going to talk about how airplanes fly and what even an airplane technically is, and also how we started learning to fly through the skies. We're going to talk about technological advancements of flight and the future of flying, all sorts of really, really awesome stuff. So make sure you stick around. Again, five episodes. Subscribe so you get them all. So first, we've all seen an airplane, right? Either in a movie or in real life. I know not everyone has flown on an airplane. The first time I did, I was afraid of the toilets. I thought I was going to get sucked out. You won't get sucked out. We're not going to talk about that in Test Tube Plus except right now, but I just want I just want you to know. You won't. When you fly, it comes down to four main things. We're simplifying it as best we can. Lift, gravity, thrust, and drag. So let's start with thrust. Thrust is what is pushing the airplane forward, right? Whether it's coming out of a propeller or a jet, that doesn't really matter. But the point is thrust is the force generated by the engines of the plane pushing it forward. You need to generate enough speed from this thrust to induce lift, which we'll come back to. The opposite of thrust, though, is drag. Drag is one of the two forces that are working to keep the piece of metal that you are sitting in not in the air, right? Drag is what's holding you back. Scientifically, drag is the interaction between a solid thing and a fluid thing. So in this case, the airplane, the solid thing, and the air, which is technically a fluid. Drag is commonly simplified by having you know people put your hand out of a window when you're driving down the highway. If you're driving right now, roll your window down. Put your hand out the window, right? You feel that? That's air resistance. That's the drag. The thrust created has to be enough to overcome that drag that is produced. If it doesn't, you won't move and you definitely won't fly. It's all dependent on the weight and shape of the plane. So all of this has been designed to eliminate as much drag as possible. That way the thrust doesn't have to be too much. Airplanes can only fly if they're producing thrust greater than their drag. And if you're still driving, by the way, turn the front edge of your hand slightly upward and you should feel the air push your hand upward. That is lift. Lift has to do with the air pressure on an airplane's wings. Lift is what is pushing the airplane up into the air, right? The thrust propels a plane forward through the air, it's a fluid, remember, and then the air hits the wings and that's forced to then go over the wing or under the wing. And based on the airplane wing shape, called an airfoil, the air will do different things. An airplane's wings are curved and slanted in such a way that there's a steep slant going up and over the wing. So that way, when air hits the steep slant, it forces it to travel over the wing faster. This is super key, because that way the air under the wing is going slower. And in doing so, it has higher pressure and can lift the plane. Faster moving air has a lower air pressure than slower moving air. So the top of a wing exerts less air pressure than the bottom, which lifts the plane. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm on an airplane, we'll hit turbulence and I'll see the plane kind of bounce. And before I understood how planes worked, I kind of got worried because the wings seem kind of fragile. But to be honest, the wings are like the tires on your car. They are the thing making sure you're moving. They're the thing keeping you up. All of the plane's weight is sitting on the wings. That's what's holding you. They're actually really strong and really, really, really cool. Based on experiments Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli did about water running through pipes, scientists and you know, enthusiasts were able to figure out how to build wings that do this. He noticed that water running through large pipes moved slower than water running through smaller pipes. He came to a conclusion using mathematics and physics that some force was acting upon the water, and that force was air. This meant the slower rate of flow meant a higher pressure. A faster rate meant a lower pressure. They call this lift generation the Bernoulli principle after this discovery. But you can't talk about lift and not talk about Isaac Newton. 
Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, right? A cup sitting on a table is pushing down on the table, and the table's pushing up on the cup. They're balanced, so the cup stays there. Air moving over the top of the wing is also subject to this Newtonian physics. An airplane wing is designed and angled very specifically so that it tapers off in the back, forcing the air up and over, just like we mentioned, and that way it puts a force on the back of the wing as well. It's a downward force, which creates an upward force to also help with the lift. The shape of the wing is the most important thing to get an airplane into the air aside from thrust gravity and all of the other things, right? But the lift and the shape, the better the shape of the wing and the more efficient the wing, the better the lift is gonna be. It's not just to make them look cool, although they definitely do that. A lot of people feel that you can't just teach one of these explanations how lift works. So, you know, we wanna make sure that we get both the Newtonian bit and the Bernoulli bit. But the final piece of this puzzle that we've mentioned, we've got lift and thrust and drag, but you also have to mention, of course, gravity, because that's the thing we're fighting the whole time, right? Gravity wants us to stay on the ground, and this is part of the weight of the aircraft. And it's so much easier to explain than lift. Obviously, you probably already understand gravity. You've experienced it your whole life. It's pulling down on every object on Earth, and this downward force is determined by your mass. The more mass you have, the more gravity you're experiencing, and any aircraft needs to generate enough lift not to just overcome the drag of the air, but also gravitational force. So putting all of this together, you make thrust to overcome drag, you have a wing that generates lift to overcome gravity, and boom, you're a right brother. Learning about all the intricacies of how airplanes work in this episode, one, super interesting, but two, was made possible by our sponsor this week, Boeing. Building the future, one century at a time. Guys, what do you think about this? Did you like wanna be a pilot or anything growing up? Did you learn about this stuff? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our Test Tube Plus episodes. Come find me on Twitter if you wanna talk about airplanes because they are really, really neat. I'm at Trace Dominguez and the show is at Test Tube. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow with more of Test Tube Plus.